Well, at last, I eventually managed to get my hands on one. Yes, this is the Air Arms TX200, and this is the Hunter Carbine version. After my last video on the HW97, I was told I had to get hold of one of these. Well, I've managed it, so keep watching. Full review coming up. YouTubers, it's Steve here and welcome to another video on Ergonology. Uh, this channel will do a whole load of air rifles, pistols and technology reviews. So if you're new here and you stumbled across us, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Check out the comments where we got our Facebook, our webpage and our forum as well. And um, it's great to have you here. So, um, yeah, what we got here, we've got the uh, Air Arms TX200. Now, um, I did the HW97 video some time ago, and I claimed it was probably the best Springer in the world. And I got so much abuse of you guys. Some of you agreed with me, all the Virac fans out there. But a lot of you said, Steve, you know, the TX200, that's got to be the top one. And even the, uh, the LGU, the Wolf LGU as well. So, believe it or not, I've actually been struggling and really trying to get hold of one of these just for the review. Because if I do look at the comments and I thought, I've got to get hold of one. And luckily, thank you very much to all of my admins, Andy, he actually has one and he's got an absolutely brand new spanking uh, one here. And this is uh, the TX200 and this is the HC, which is the Hunter Carbine version, which is the shorter version. And it's in 177, so thank you very much, Andy, for lending this to me. So let's give you a little bit about the rifle itself. So you can get the rifle, obviously it's from Air Arms and it is a direct competitor to the HW97 and all the variants of that. Now there's been many, many different versions of this and of course Air Arms, this is one of the most popular Springer rifles out there. Uh, many versions of it and it's currently up in the Mark III version. Now you can pick these up brand new anywhere and it depends on where you go and the deals you get but anywhere between about 450 to 600 pounds depending on the type of the TX200 you get. So the three types that you can get are the standard TX200 Springer um, which is basically the full length spring version under lever spring. Um, you can get the HC version, which this is, it's just a Hunter Carbine, Carbine being it's a little bit smaller. And then you can get the Pro Sport, which is again an under lever, but the under lever's hidden away um, and it's a little bit more expensive. Now you can get these bad boys, you can get them in 177 and in 2.2. And obviously it's a spring under lever rifle. So there's no cock in the barrel, you're actually cocking underneath. And we'll just very quickly just show you um, if we just bring that out and just pull it down a little bit. Obviously I can't do this fully, otherwise I'd have to dry fire, which you should never do with a springer. But basically it's an under lever and it clicks back in place like so. So like I'm saying, you get these in 177, uh, 177 and 22. You can also get them in FAC and sub 12 foot pound variants, and I'm sure you can get in other powers as well. Um, you can also get them in a beach uh, stock and like this one here in a walnut stock. So the prices do increase as well if you do that. And you can get them in left or right hand versions. Um, typically a left hand version with a walnut stock is gonna cost you a little bit extra about it, extra 80 UK pounds on that. So let's go through some of the specifications of the rifle itself. So um, if you take the standard TX200, you're looking at an overall length of just over 1,055 millimeters. And in the HC, this is, that comes down to 955 millimeters. Now the barrel length, the barrel actually starts up here where you actually put your pellet in. Uh, down to the end. So your standard barrel length is 395 millimeters, but in the carbine version this is, it's 319 millimeters. So you can see it's a smaller barrel. And then the weight itself. Now it is a heavy springer. Um, and the weight, we'll come into the pros and cons later, but the weight plays an important part with springers. But the weight of the standard unscoped one, the full length one, is 4.1 kilograms. So that is a heavy beast. And then you've got the um, Hunter Carbine um, in the walnut that I've got here is 3.8 kilograms unscoped. So yeah, it's not a light rifle. Let's be straight up with it on there. 
So let's just go through it all and uh, let's talk you through the rifle and what you actually get for your money. So we'll do a usual, we'll do the walk around. So at the back we've got a standard rubberized uh, butt pad on here. It's actually quite a nice one, lots of good um, holes in there to help with the recoil. And this rifle does have quite a bit of recoil on it. And then we come onto the stock. Now the stock has got to be one of the nicest things about this rifle. This is the walnut stock and this is a right handed version. You can tell by the comb here uh, for your cheap piece. But it is absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. It's got all of the uh, nice engraving on here. Really, really nice. Um, it's a long, long time since I've seen a stock this nice. Um, and it goes all the way down to the end, the engraving, the checkering, or whatever you want to call it, the stippling. <laughs> I can never remember what it's called, but it goes all the way down. Um, it gives you a good grip up on, on the foregrip side of it all. So absolutely beautiful. Um, and underneath, we've got the little Air Arms logo stamped into the butt grip there, the trigger grip there. Um, from a, from a shooting point of view, basically you can go thumbs up or thumbs down, grip round. Uh, there's no cutouts or anything there for you or anything in the trigger. It's a very basic standard type of stock, but really, really nicely made. Now if we move around now to the trigger, we've got a proper metal um, trigger guard on here and a nice, nice, nice uh, two-stage metal trigger in here. Now this two-stage trigger is absolutely really nice to use. Um, normally when I got the rifle I will show you it all uh, but obviously I can't do that with the Springer but basically it's got a real good definitive first stage on it and then a quite a it's a fair tug on it but it's not too bad and you can nicely follow through it's a really nice two-stage trigger on it and of course you can adjust it all now it's not as adjustable as are the day states or the FX's or anything like that but you can adjust the weights of it on there um, and this one is straight out the box I believe and it's absolutely perfect fine on that really really do like it um, we move down we can actually see the actual under lever mechanism under here really really nice as well what we have also at the back and again I'll leave pictures like I normally do but we have a safety catch at the back now this safety catch will automatically come on when you cock the rifle um, and it can be a bit annoying that you have to remember to cock the rifle put it back up switch the safety catch off the safety catch is at the back here and when it's in the fire mode you'll see a little red dash appear here on there and you can put the safety back on as well uh, so yeah that, that's the safety on there um it's just the way that they do that. You'll find a lot of springers are doing that nowadays. Up the top then we have a standard 12 mil dovetail rail up the top where you can fit your scopes, etc. on there. And talking about scopes, you do have to be careful what scope you get because you'll notice that where you actually put the pallet in here, so this is the pallet port. So when you pull the under lever down, let's just do that for you. There's a little button on the side. When you pull the under lever down, you can see that that pallet port is opening up um, so that's where you funnel your pellet into the barrel. You've got to make sure that your scope is not going to go over that, otherwise you're not going to be able to get your finger in there to put your pellet in. So be careful on the size of your scope that you put on there. But you do have a lot of room on this um, 11mm dovetail rail up in it. And this one's just fitted with a bog standard Hawk. Um, I think it's a 3 to 12 scope on here. So really, really, really nice. So if we move up the rifle, so like we said, we've got the beautiful walnut stock here. And this is the actual under lever release mechanism on here. So basically we just press it in, um, press it in and then literally it's held, the front is just held on uh, with a nice little ball bearing catch. So I don't know if you can see that. Again, I'll leave some pictures around for you to see that. But basically then you pull down on here and the nice thing about that is that you're not actually tugging at the barrel which I always hate with springers because of over time you're wondering whether or not you're, you're bending the barrel or anything but literally you pull it all the way down, you cock it, you engage it, you'll hear three clicks and when we go outside to do the shooting I will show you that. Once you've got that in place then there is um, what uh, AA called their safe lock system. So basically we all know that when you cock a springer you should always keep hold of the barrel on there so that it doesn't fly back or you don't hit the trigger and it flies back and fires off on there 
This system has, you know, some of you call it anti-bear catch or something, but it has what they call a safe lock. Literally, once it's cocked, it can't move. You then have to press the trigger, the, uh, the release catch again, to release it and to cock the rifle fully up and get it ready for firing. However, I always recommend, obviously, that you always keep hold of this bad boy on here. So that's quite simple on there, and then we can just close it up, safety off, and fire off the rifle. The barrel itself, uh, basically, as we say, starts up at the top of the uh, pellet probe here, the pellet port here, um, and in this case, it's a 319 millimeter barrel on here. Now, on the end on here, there is the ability on the Hunter carbine version only to take off this end section and put a moderator on there. However, the full length version has what they call a built-in moderator and there is no ability easily, let's say without some serious modding, of adding any extra moderators on there. And this rifle does have quite a loud bark on it. So um, just be aware of that. The finishing all the way around the rifle, the actual metal work itself, is beautiful, absolutely really nice. It attracts fingerprints like all bluing does, so I seriously recommend once you finish with it, you give it a good wipe down. But absolutely beautiful bluing, lovely, lovely finish all over the rifle itself. And if we spin the bad boy around, the other side is just as beautiful on the stock, we can see all of that, but there's nothing to mention on the other side itself. There's no controls over that, obviously, apart from the safety catch at the back here. So absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning rifle. It is fairly heavy and chunky. I'll just talk about that for a moment. Is that when I did the 97 review, I noticed that that was heavy as well. But as you all know with Springers, they do have a recoil on them and weight does help with that. It helps stabilize the rifle with artillery hold. You can get some very, very good groups. So I've been told that this is the legend of the rifle. You know, this rifle has been around for a long, long time in all its different variants. And um, I'm actually eagerly wondering how good this is. Now, I'm not a great shot, and I'm certainly not a great Springer shot. So what we'll do is we'll do our usual. Um, I'm going to put some pillows down. I'm going to try my best with this. Obviously, I can't clamp it down, but I'm going to try my best with it and see how good it is. Um, and we'll do our usual shooting. So we'll go outside, and then when we've done that, we'll come back in, and we'll have a chat about the pros and the cons of the rifle. Right guys, now we're outside, I can actually show you how to load this because obviously as we all know you should not dry fire springers and I am not going to fire a pellet for a springer indoors. So to load the TX, um, what we can see is right on the edge here and I'll leave some pictures but there is actually a release catch here for the under lever and you need to make use of this. And it is also um, an anti-slip, anti-bear catch, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's a safety device built in as well to stop the actual rifle, the spring firing up on itself or going off on itself and getting your fingers trapped. So the way to do it is quite simple. Is you press this in here, and then you pull down on the lever. Now, when you pull down on that lever, you need to pull it, actually be quite firm with it, and you need to get a distinct click on it, and that is what sets the safety catch at the back. Um, so let me just show you how to do that. So basically, you press the button here, hold on to the lever, you pull it back, and you can feel the tension in the spring here, and you keep pulling back, keep pulling back. There's the first click, but you need to go further than that. You need to go until you hear about three clicks. It goes like click, click, click. At that stage, then the safety catch has been engaged. Keep hold of this lever. Now, I, you should not do this, okay? But I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You can actually let go of that, and you'll see that it's not moving. And that's the anti-trap system in here. It's opened the port up in here, keep your fingers clear. But basically, yeah, it does have it, but always keep hold of it like so. Then get yourself a uh, 177 pallet, or whatever caliper you're using, caliber you're using, and then just thumb it in into the port itself nice and simple like so we'll bring that in and again i'll leave some pictures for you to see that but that should be nice and simply thumbed in always keep hold of this once you've done that you then need to release the spring the release the catch again by pressing the catch here and then if you've done it correctly this will just be nice and loose if you haven't pulled it all the way back you'll feel that spring that tells you that you've not pulled it all the way back properly push it all the way forward and click it in place you can now let go of here you're ready now to fire the shot off. Now the safety catch comes on automatically when it's cocked. So you push the safety catch off, you take a good aimed shot. 
like so. And as you can hear, it is quite a loud springer. So that's basically how to load the TX200. Okay guys, we're gonna do our usual thing here. Now, I've got a rather elaborate display down here. Um, this is a Springer and you really do need to be using artillery hold for this. So I'm not gonna use my rifle stand because it doesn't give the rifle room to move. And I'm gonna try and make this as accurate as possible. So I've got a front and a back rest here, which is just some old cushions that I've stolen off Abby. She'll love that. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is just line myself up and try and keep as light a hold on the rifle as possible, let it move. If you wanna know about artillery hold and what it's all about, check the video up here. Um, I'll leave a link up there. Okay, so let's start this ball off rolling with the uh, JSB 8.44 grain exacts. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the AA field Diablos. we're going to try the Crossmans. Okay, I think it's the uh, Day State Sovereign's time now. Okay, so we're back inside and how did we do? We all know I'm not a great shot, but that was at 25 meters, unsorted pallets, five shots at each. I tried my time, um, I practiced a bit before, and we'll see how we got on. But um, not too bad to start off with. I started off with JSBs up the top there, and for me, that was pretty good. You know, the scope on here is not great, um, but I, I, I'm quite happy for a Springer. I'm very happy, in fact, I'll be happy with that, with a PCP. Then I moved on to the AAs, um, the Air Arms Diablos. Um, they are not too bad at all, not too shabby. That pull shot down at the bottom was most definitely me. Then we moved on to the Crossmans. I threw them in for fun. Actually, quite surprised, not a bad little group in there. Um, and then we had the Sovereigns, and the Sovereigns were actually doing very, very well. I found the Sovereigns and the Crossmans sort of like fitted in a little bit tighter into the barrel, and that sort of helped. And then I went on to the JSB Heavies, and they, you know, there's five shots in there, and they're all under a five pence piece. I am superly impressed with that. So, um, 
Is this bad boy accurate? Oh, most definitely this is accurate. Um, is it as accurate as the HW97? Yes, I would say so. I think the errors and the differences there are down to me not being experienced as springers and not being a great shot at the same time. And I haven't got the rifle for that long. I've only got it for two or three weeks, so I really can't put that much time and effort into it. I'm used to springers. So um, accuracy, most definitely up there. Um, which is better, the HW97 or the TX200 in terms of accuracy? I can't tell you. All I can say is they're probably as good as each other. It's going to come down to personal taste, which pellets you put in, and more importantly, how good you are as a shot on that. What else is good about the rifle? Well, the build quality and the finish is fantastic. Second to none. You know, I can't fault it. Uh, the stock is absolutely gorgeous. Maybe, maybe, maybe I would have preferred it just a little bit darker. I know some people put extra varnishes on them as well, but it's absolutely stunning. The blue in, the metal work on the rifle is absolutely superb quality. Air Arms always do that. They put a lot of effort. This rifle's been around for a long, long time, and they have certainly, certainly refined it. The, um, another good thing is the um, the safety, what they call the safe lock. So when you cock the rifle, you know, as I showed in the video, which I don't recommend you do, you could let go of that under lever while you're putting your finger in there. There's that lock system in there. Obviously keep hold of it, but it has a very, very good safety feature on there. So I do like that. Okay. The weight, yes it is heavy. If you get one of these and you're out hunting in the field, you are most definitely gonna want to add some sling studs on here. Now they don't come as standard, so you're gonna have to fit them yourself. But it is a heavy rifle. When you've got a scope on here, we're looking at probably close to five kilograms here. Um, and it is making my arms ache a little bit just holding on to it. But that weight has a very good advantage. Because of the recoil action with springers, then basically that helps stabilize the rifle, keeps it in a straight line. So it is also a plus point and a negative point with the weight on it. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword and you'll find the same with the HW97 from Virac. That was a heavy rifle, but it was stupidly accurate. I've got a light BSA Springer. It's lighter, but it's nowhere near as accurate on there. And combine that then with the match grade barrel on here, which is a, um, a loaf of welfare barrel on here, you are getting brilliant accuracy. I've actually done some really good shots out to 40 meters, just practicing myself with it. So um, I was quite impressed with that. The other benefits of this, and this is the fanboy, do I go Xbox PC or P um, Xbox um, PlayStation? It's that sort of argument. It's the PCP versus the Springer. Well, I'm gonna weigh into that a little bit here, but basically when you've got yourself a Springer and you spent your 500 pound on one of these, that's it. All you've got to do is buy pellets. There's no air tanks, there's none of that, there's no charging, none of it. You're never gonna run out of air. You're in the field with this. As long as you've got pellets and you've got an arm to cock that down, you are fine. So that is is, you know that's it that's all you need to buy put a scope on it and you're good to go the other good thing I love about this and the same with all of the under levers is the fact that it's under lever that means you're not smacking onto that barrel each time and to break the barrel down I personally don't like that you know over a year how many times are you break in the barrel? Is that barrel warping? Are you denting it? I, I don't like that. The under lever system really does obviously work, um, which is why you find the most accurate springers generally employ an under lever system. That basically means that you're not touching that barrel. That barrel stays rigid. It's not being moved around or anything. It's the under lever system that does the cocking. So I really, really do like that. But there are some cons. Okay, so there are some cons with this. Uh, at the end of the day, the weight. Yes, we've already said it's a good point, but the weight when you're walking around the field, this is aching my arms already. So you definitely are gonna need some slings with this if you're actually gonna be out in the field with it. Definitely issue. Um, one thing I found that it might just be this actual rifle, but I found the cocking to be hit and miss at times. Um, in the video, I explained that when you cock it with the under lever, you, you've got to hear it ratchet a couple of times. It's like click, click, click. You hear it as it goes down. A couple of times, 
basically it was not cocking on me um, and what you'll find is that when you've actually got the lever down so i'm sort of semi show you this if i just pull the lever down here and just pull it down you can feel that tension there now obviously i'm not going to cock this properly but you can feel the tension sometimes when i pulled it all the way back to cock it i still had tension on the spring and the safe lock system wasn't engaging and I knew that was the case because the safety catch wasn't clicking in place as well and that happened to me quite a lot actually now maybe it's just this rifle maybe it's my technique what I found is really you've got to be quite firm with this and just bring it right down not too sharply but bring it down nice and distinct pull on it don't be gentle with it but I was trying that and I got a few issues with it as well now it's fairly easy to rectify literally you just sort of like hold on to it and then pull it down again and just make sure but um, you know, it was a bit of hit and a miss, and I never found that with the 97, that the system on the HW97. But I certainly had this. You know, I've had this now for a couple of weeks, and it's happened at least six or seven times to me, and it's caught me out. So um, yeah, a little bit concerning. It might just be this rifle, but watch out for it. Certainly, if you go and get one of these secondhand or new, definitely take it for a shot and try it. Stick a good 20, 30 pellets through it, cock it, and see what it's like. Make sure that it's engaging properly on there. Um, then the other bad thing I don't like about it is the safety catch. The fact that the safety catch comes on every time you click the cock the rifle. It's annoying. The amount of times I'm there, I cock the rifle, I settle myself down, uh, ah, safety catch. Because the first stage goes and then nothing happens. Um, but yeah, I can see it's the safety feature, but it is really, really annoying. Um, loading one of these with gloves is going to be a little bit difficult, unless you've got some really fine gloves. Getting your fingers in there is a bit awkward um i'm right-handed you saw in the video i hadn't quite worked out how i was going to do it so basically a cock it you've got to keep hold of the cocking lever with one hand then you've got your other hand and you're trying to thumb the pallet in the right-handed you've got a scope on you can't see what you're doing it's on this side you'll get used to it but it it can be difficult it's exactly the same as the 97 as well uh the fact that you can't add a moderator onto the standard longer version on it that's a bit of a downside. You know, you're going to have to do some modding or find a way of grub screwing and modify it on there. With the Hunter Carbine version, you can put one on, but um, it's a bit of a shame that you can't do it. They say it's a built in moderator. Obviously, I don't have the standard version to tell you um, what it's like in terms of loudness, but if it's anything to go by the Carbine version, it, this is loud. Um, there's quite a lot of twang with this rifle. When you pull it and then you, you can feel that spring and everything go in you really feel it and it is loud very very loud um it's certainly in its standard format like this not a um neighbor friendly backyard blinker you would certainly want to be wanting to put a moderator on here but with the tx200 they've been around for ages there's plenty of piston kits that you can get for these different seals you can mod these to an inch of their life and people do, which also means that if you go out and get one of these secondhand, watch out for what mods have been put in it. Make sure they've been done properly, they're working, check your warranties, you see whether or not um, whoever is you're buying off them is gonna give you the original parts, because these do get modded a lot. So yeah, those are the major things I found about it, just to sum up the downsides, because I know a lot of people like my reviews, because I tell it as it is, it's heavy, it's loud, but, it's accurate and the price for a Springer, it is expensive for a Springer. You know, five to 600 pound, but you know what? You're getting a quality rifle. So the question you guys probably want me to answer is which is better, the HW97 or the TX200? Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna enter that argument. I'm gonna say they're both as good as each other. I have a preference over the um, Virac 97. I personally just got on with it better and I liked it better. But, you know, that's just a personal preference. I think this is a stunning quality rifle. If you're really serious into your springers and you want a good springer that's accurate, then you should definitely add one of these to your collection. Very, very nice. So I would love to know your comments on this. I'm gonna get, have a flame war down below. Is the HW97 or the TX the better rifle? Let me know, keep it civil and polite please down below. Tell me your thoughts, tell me what modifications you've done to your TX200. It helps everybody else out that comes and looks at the video then reads the comments when they're thinking about getting one. And, and as always, if you haven't actually subscribed to us, hit that little bell item uh, to remind you and with the subscribe button as well. 
Check out our video links in the uh, in the video description. There's links to our forum on there where you can buy and sell rifles. There's our Facebook group on there. There's a web page where we do 3D printing. Um, I'd love you guys to all come on board and join us. So I'll catch you next time on the next video and uh, see you later.